Prophecy Club. This is going to be one of the most well, scary, interesting, and most unusual topics you have ever heard. It's going to be the war with alien demons. Now, I've got to say that again. The war with alien demons. Now, I, I, do I want to start with prophecy or do I want to start with the information and then back it with prophecy? I think if I start with prophecy, you won't catch it as well. So I'm going to start with the information, and then I'm going to back it up with prophecy. In other words, what I'm about to show you in only two paragraphs actually answers a whole lot of questions, at least for me, maybe for you too, as well as what some of these things in prophecy really mean. May 29, 2017. A boy, I think they said he was 10 years old, named Jeremy, drowned, and he was dead for 40 minutes in the water. He saw Jesus, and he was shown the future. Now, I know you might be saying, oh, this is rubbish. Well, not when they come up with stuff like this that most adults would not know or understand, and all of a sudden he's talking about some things that only a, an avid prophecy student would even know and understand or even come close to believing. So he says that World War III is not the worry. Something bad and evil is coming. There is a war with the alien demons. That's the real problem. He says there were going to be demons that will pass themselves off as alien-type creatures, but they're not really aliens. They're not from another planet. They are actually from another dimension. Part of Satan's army who will wage war against this world and try to destroy every human being on earth. <laughs> That's in prophecy. Oh, just you wait. He says World War III is going to be bad, but nothing compared to the war coming with the alien demonic beings. He says they would come to the earth and try to destroy it. And now here's the part that really perked my ears up. They're going to eat people. He said it twice. They're going to eat people. These demon aliens will portray themselves as aliens, but they're in fact Demons, demonic demons from Satan. He said they will wage war upon this earth, and they're going to eat people. Now, I probably better read that again, because I'm about to show you that in several prophecies. I don't like it either, but there's about to be some big tests coming our way. And we want to always think, oh, well, this is somewhere over the horizon, over the rainbow, 20 or 30, 46, long after I'm gone, I'll never see this. Well, wait a minute. What if the second seven-year period is about to start on this Feast of Trumpets, this September 6 to 8? What if Revelation 6 to 1 is fulfilled? And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. That is the start of the seven-year tribulation. And for lots of reasons, sometimes I can see, yes, it will be. For lots of other reasons, sometimes I can see, no, it won't be. It can't be. And I have prayed a lot of times for God, <laughs> in his wisdom, just refuse to tell me when it's going to start. But if I ever get the answer, I'll, I'll ask him if I can tell you. <laughs> but the point is, what if? What if the tribulation really is that soon? That would mean the things I'm going to be talking about today, we're probably going to be seeing in our lifetime. All right, now, I'll read it again. May 29, 2017, Jeremy drowned, dead for 40 minutes. Jesus came and showed him the future. He said that World War III is not the worry. Something big, bad, and evil is coming. A war with alien demons is the real problem. There will be demon alien type creatures, part of Satan's army, who will wage war against this world and try to destroy every human on earth. I'm going to show you this is in Scripture. World War III is going to be bad, but nothing compared to the war coming from the alien demonic beings. They would come to earth and try to destroy it. They're going to eat people. Said it twice. They're going to eat people. These demon aliens will portray themselves as aliens, but they are demonic beings from Satan. They will wage war on this earth, and they are going to eat people. Oh, come on, Stan. Really? Okay, well, let's go to the Bible. James chapter 5, verse 1. Go to now, you rich men. Weep and howl, for your miseries shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Now, this is talking about very close to the day of the Lord. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you. Now, here it is. And shall eat your flesh, 
as it were fire. Now, I suspect that what they're really saying is the same thing Revelation 17, 6 says, which says, and she'll eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So that's probably what it's really saying, that they actually cook and eat human flesh. Let me go back to read this again. And she'll eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped together treasure for the last days. In other words, this is your Moloch and Baal worshipers is talking about here. And they have prepared all of these underground uh, uh, continuance of humanity programs and things like that. Now let's go on. Behold, the hire the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. In other words, I think it's all of the taxes that they've stolen from us and held back. You have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. This is talking about the evil people. I believe it's talking about Moloch and Baal worshipers that literally believe in eating human flesh and drinking human blood. Now, it gets worse. Now, when I was memorizing the book of Revelation, you know, it's always strange to memorize words that you don't totally understand. Well, this is one, boy, I was memorizing this, and I kept reading it and going over it and praying. Lord, what are you saying here? What do you mean here? What do you mean here? You know, and I never totally got what, what I believe as deep an understanding as I did when I heard this 10-year-old boy's testimony. I'll read it. Revelation seventeen sixteen, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. Now, the ten horns are how they divide the seven continents into ten global regions. So these are the nations of the world. When it says ten horns. The seven continents divided into ten global regions. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, thee shall hate the whore. Okay, that's America. And shall make her desolate and naked, and here it is, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Now, when I was memorizing this, I thought, oh, well, that's probably the atomic weapons, burn her with fire. Well, maybe not. In light of what this ten-year-old boy saw, maybe it's literally cooking and eating humans. Now, is that because they hate them, or is that because there's a shortage of food, or is that because they're rich, your religious rituals? I don't know. But that was one of the verses that troubled me. What, what, what is this saying? It's saying people on earth one day will cook human flesh and eat it. And I held off saying anything of that because I, I understand how that sounds. I know how ridiculous that sounds. I know how I can lose credibility for telling you that. But in light of what this 10-year-old boy was shown, maybe not. Now let's go to Psalms. Psalm 27.1. The Lord is my light of my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh. Eat up my flesh. You know, it's sad to say, but I looked up the scriptures that have eat flesh in them, and there were a lot of them. Now let's jump down to verse 3. Who also eat up the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them. Flay their skin. Okay, that's literally eating humans. Flay their skin from off them, and they break their bones and chop them in pieces for as the pot and as flesh within the cauldron. In other words, they're chopping up humans including the bone, tossing it into water and boiling it and eating it. That's exactly what that scripture is saying. Psalm 27, if you want to go check it out. Now, the way it comes to me about what the topic is supposed to be on the radio program, the way this works is God begins to put it on my heart. The info comes sometimes then from several sources to verify what he laid on my heart. Many times, it's just pretty much instant. Just that day, I get what I'm supposed to put on the radio that day. However, sometimes it kind of boils for a while. Sometimes it's put on my heart, and I put it on the shelf, and this has been sitting on the shelf, as you can imagine, for a long time, till I got this information from this 10-year-old boy. And in this case, when I saw that, all of a sudden there became an urgency to talk about this. In this case, it's been setting for a while, but when the urgency hit, I knew I needed to bring it to you. Now let's go to another scripture. Again, I'm calling this the war with the alien demons. Let's go to Daniel 7, 7. After this in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, now this is your world government, 
dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and it devoured breaking pieces and snapped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and had ten horns. All it's saying is they're going to divide the seven continents into ten global regions, but, but there's your ten horns again. I consider the horns. Now, here's the point. There came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, meaning one of the ways you're going to be able to spot the Antichrist early is when you see the earth divided into ten global regions, which may be happening in the next year or so, and then there's one man that comes up, that's the Antichrist. By the way, he is not alive right now. I heard somebody say, well, he might be alive on the earth right now. No, right now he is falling endlessly and helplessly in the bottomless pit. And then he comes out of the bottomless pit. One day he's not on the earth, and then the next day he's there in a full-grown body. He ascends out of the bottomless pit. He does not get born of a woman again. That's already happened. That's a topic for another day. See my book, Secret Door to Understand Bible Prophecy, explaining all of that, how to spot him and everything. Anyway, there came up among them another little horn, meaning when we see the, the world government, where the seven continents are divided into ten global regions, then there will come up an eleventh guy, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. That's war. That means that when the Antichrist comes into the world immediately, he will start a war, and that war will overcome three of those ten global regional rulers. That's the Antichrist. Now, let's go to Revelation 6.1. And I just quoted this. And I saw the Lamb open one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. And one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Then it says, And I saw, I behold, a white horse. Now, I used to think, oh, well, maybe that's the Pope or some garbage like that. that no, when I memorized it, I saw deeper into the Scriptures. The white horse is an angel of God, sent out by God to bring judgment upon the earth. Period. It's an angel of God. Behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Meaning, when the tribulation starts, one of the first things you'll see is a big war started in cooperation with the white horse, but it doesn't just stop with him. Then, when he opened the second seal, there went out another horse that was red. That's not communism, as I used to think. And power is given him that sat there to take peace from the earth, meaning that right after the tribulation starts, there is not just one war, but there are several wars. This is important for us to understand as it ties back to the alien war. Then let's jump down to verse 8. A pale horse, and his name that sat upon him was Death, and hell followed with him, and power is given him over a fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, it was the beasts of the earth. Now, this is the fourth seal. The audible voice spoke to me and said, The seven seals play over seven years. The seven trumpets play over seven months. And the seven vials play over seven days. Now, it did not say that one seal plays in one year. And I believe that there are cases in there where several of the seals play very quickly. And then some of the seals stretch over several years. So don't think it's one seal per year. But this is the fourth seal. And in my opinion, we're probably talking about roughly two or three years into the tribulation at this point. We're probably nearing mid-trib or middle part of the seven-year tribulation. Now, the point, the reason I say that is we see that the world government has formed 10 global regions. Then the Antichrist is loosed. Then a big war starts. All right, now, where are we with war right now? Well, you see, China is rattling the cage. We see Russia is very angry. We see there's problems with Israel and Lebanon and Syria and Russia's involved. We see a lot of nations that are geared up and got their war machine all built, and they are ready to go, and they're basically drawing a line in the sand and saying, I dare you to step across that line. They've got a big chip on their shoulder just saying, I dare you to bump me and knock that chip off, and we're going to go to war. So we can see, literally, that we are actually very close to a war, meaning we're probably very close to that tribulation. Just look. Every time you see 
something about how a nation is building its war machine, understand that saying that we're getting closer to the tribulation. Because when the tribulation starts on about or around that same time, a big war will start. Now, let's specifically go to where I'm talking about where it's written in the Bible. Let me read part of this again. Been a few minutes since we read it. So he says, something worse than World War III is coming. A war with alien demons. He said, now they'll put themselves off as aliens, but they're not. They're demons. Now, we tend to think a, de- a demon is just a spiritual thing. Eh, that's not exactly true, as this scripture is about to show you. And he said they're going to eat people, and their goal is going to be to kill everyone on earth if they possibly can. Now let's go to Revelation 9. Here it is in the scriptures. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. That's an angel of God. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now, let's talk about that. Could it be that this CERN thing is actually going to be a portal to another dimension? Did you know that the objective of CERN, and they've even put it in writing, is they want to open other dimensions, and they keep upping the power and increasing the power. And who knows? We don't even know. Maybe they have already opened the portal to certain dimensions and not told us about it. I mean, they certainly aren't necessarily honest. So I saw a star fall from heaven. Him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Think of it like this. It might be a portal. Yes, it might also be physically a giant crack in the earth where something from deep in the earth comes out of the earth. And yes, I can certainly see that too. He opened the bottomless pit, and there rose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Now, here's the point. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and it was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. Okay, so it means that these guys are not the ones that are eating humans. These are the ones that are sent specifically to sting and torment humans. Why? Because God wants to be mean to them? No. He's trying to get them to stop sinning, repent, and turn to Jesus. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it. And shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. When it says, in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, probably it's talking about a time when the med beds have pretty much reached everybody on earth. Anybody that wants to get the three-strand DNA, get their DNA changed into alien DNA, Anybody that wants to get an eternal body, anything fixed in their body, fixed or repaired. In other words, at that point, pretty much everybody on earth has had the opportunity to get into a med bed, which is another reason why I suspect that the tribulation is not that close. Because at this point, who's even heard of a med bed? I think I did a whole program just talking about med beds, and I think that these scriptures are some pretty good reasons why the tribulation is not about to start. But here, let me continue, make my point here. So in those days shall men seek death, meaning that these locusts are stinging them and hurting so bad they want to die, but they can't get away from it. Now, there's also a misunderstanding here in Scripture I probably should correct. The shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. They are locusts. These are not horses. The horses are yet in the next chapter or down there. But there is a time when the horses do cause problems too, but that's another topic another day. This is locust. All it's saying is that they have breastplates that are hard to kill. These locusts are going to be really, really hard to kill. It's not going to be something like you just swing a fly swatter and kill them. How do I know? Because it says the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle, meaning they don't sound like a little bitty locust. Uh, In other words, like a mosquito has a real high pitch, whereas a big bird has a low pitch. So when they, the sound of the wings is the sound of chariots and many horses running to battle. My guess is these are somewhere between 50 and 75, maybe even 100 pounds each. 
and they are almost impossible to kill. And it says there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt me in five months. But they still aren't eating people. So it's saying that there's something else coming. Now let's go to something, and I'm going to show you something very interesting about the Tower of Babel. This is Genesis 11.1. 1. And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, and they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they de- dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. Now, what's it saying? When you burn a brick and you get it really, really hard, if it is made of the right substance, it turns to a crystal. What they were doing was making a giant crystal. They had brick for stone, slime or crude oil or tar they had for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Now, are they trying to build a skyscraper so they can reach into heaven, so they can say that they have built the highest thing on earth? No. What they're really trying to do is build a giant crystal so that they can reach into heaven? No. So that it can be a portal to reach into another dimension. Let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the whole face of the earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded, and said, Behold, the people is one. Now, here it comes. And they have one language, and this they begin to do. And now, here it is, here it is, here it is. Nothing will be restrained from them. Now, what does that mean? Nothing will be restrained from them. It's not saying that they're going to be able to build great skyscrapers. No, it's saying that they're going to be able to access information from the aliens through another portal, and then they're going to be able to do anything that the aliens do. That's what it's saying. Meaning the same thing is what that countless of these civilizations have done through the years. You see pyramids uh, down in Mexico and Brazil. You see pyramids all around the world. Why did they build so many pyramids? And by the way, many of those cultures say that, well, they just disappeared overnight. Everybody just disappeared. I mean, thousands of people, this big city just disappeared overnight, and there's no trace of them. Well, in my opinion, I think what happened is that these people began doing human sacrifice. Well, why do they do human sacrifice? Well, this is one of the recent revelations that I got. Human sacrifice brings the demons. It opens a portal. I saw a video recently where they went into this huge city that's up in the New Mexico area, and he said the same thing. Everybody just disappeared. I mean, they they can't understand how apparently a large city of thousands of people, and there are no trace of them. And they said, yeah, well, maybe they moved up here. No. Maybe they moved over here. No. They just disappeared overnight. Well, I think it's because God killed them all. But they said what they noticed, and what they noticed in a lot of these places, either they have large pyramids, human sacrifice, or in this case, they had big circles made with brick around them. Well, what are they doing with a circle? It's the same thing with a pentagram and a circle. In other words, they are using these to access portals, to access demons. Here, I just pulled it up. Okay, back in 1947, I believe that was the year, I'm looking at Wikipedia, President Harry S. Truman. Now, you're not going to find this thing I say here. It, it, you're probably not going to find it on the Internet. They probably pulled it. But, you know, I've been doing this Bible prophecy a long time, like 28 years, and I have watched thousands of DVDs or videotapes that have ma- been mailed to me over these last 28 years. One of them showed how the aliens came to Harry Truman, President of the United States at the time, and they made a deal. They said, we will give you high technology if you will allow us to abduct your people and conduct experiments on them. So the whole thing has always been, going back to the days of the pyramids even, that the aliens would come into their presence when they're sacrificing humans, and the sacrifice, I guess that extreme pain and the the shedding of blood, opens a portal, And these demons come in, and then they give them high technology. See, that's what they're doing back here in the Tower of Babel. They said, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. That makes crystal. 
And as they're going to build a tower to reach into heaven, well, it's not up to the sky. It's not a skyscraper. It's reaching into another dimension through a portal, probably the same thing they're doing in CERN right now. CERN is a big circle, you see. And then the Bible says, then nothing will be restrained from them, meaning if they can reach through this portal, then they're going to be able to access the information from the demons, and they're going to have all kinds of advanced technology. For example, are you aware that humans cannot build their pyramids? We cannot build a pyramid today. We do not have the equipment. <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't we have to? No, no, actually, we can't. We can't build a pyramid because those pyramid, those bricks were so, they're, first of all, they're very, very big. But did you know you cannot insert a razor blade between the bricks? That's how closely and how carefully that they were placed and how accurately they were cut. They were cut with something like some kind of a laser or something. And I saw another special on TV where they had taken various kinds of rocks and cut them, not necessarily square, but in kind of like a various shape. And we can't do it today. We can't cut rock as quickly and cleanly and easily as whatever it was did that. And where was that found? Well, that was found in Rockwall, Texas. You know why they call it rock wall? Because they started digging down deep, and they hit what appeared to be a, a wall. They started digging more, and it was so big and so deep, they all got scared, and they just covered it up. Rock wall, Texas. Go check it out. But it says nothing will be restrained from them. What we're really talking about is beings from another dimension coming into the world and stinging and eating and tormenting and trying to kill people. Concerning the solemn September assembly coming up September 6 to 8, let me encourage you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to just do one thing. Just pray. And let me say pray several times a day and stretch it over three days. Take three days praying several times a day, asking God if he wants you to go to the solemn September assembly. And I believe he'll speak to your heart. I believe he'll confirm it to you somehow. And if he tells you to go, then you don't have to worry about the rest of it. He will arrange it. So that's my request today. Take the next three days and pray and just continue to ask God several times during the day for three days if you're supposed to go to the solemn September assembly, September 6 to 8. If you are, you go to watchmanstrumpet.com to get signed up. The best barter is with gold and silver. Mention Prophecy Club when you call cornerstoneassetmetals.com and they can also help you with your retirement accounts. cornerstoneassetmetals.com When a nuclear device goes off, it produces an EMP electromagnetic pulse and it fries every computer chip unless they're protected. The good news is EMPShield.com has devices a military testing facility says are 100% accurate to protect against EMP, solar flares, lightning, power surges backed by a 10-year warranty and a $25,000 insurance policy. And they come with simple installation instructions for home, vehicles, RV, and electric generators. You can have electricity in a blackout. EMPShield.com. Use the promo code PROPHECY for a $50 gift card. This helps Prophecy Club. That's EMPShield.com. Promo code PROPHECY for a $50 gift card. EMPShield.com. EMPShield.com. Heaven's Harvest has food in stock. The coveted freeze-dried food in stock at HeavensHarvest.com. And if you put the promo code in STAN, it helps your Prophecy Club, and it also gets you a packet of heirloom seeds free. HeavensHarvest.com. Promo code STAN. S-T-A-N. HeavensHarvest.com. STAN. You can now watch 160 Prophecy Club recordings without interruption. The introductory rate... $20 recurring monthly subscription. A one-year subscription is a gift of $200. You get the first three days free just to check it out. Watch prophecyclub.com. Prayerfully consider supporting the Prophecy Club with your gifts of support. We would not be here without your prayers and generous financial support. 